needs a defender. You can't trust all the preachers you hear. You can't trust them. Churches are full of bewitched people who are confused about the gospel. A very provocative question. It may even go viral. <laughs> Can I trust gender person who change their whole body? Let's say it's a woman or a man. Completely change their body. Then they come to Christ. They still have even the feelings of their old life. Are they going to make it to heaven? When God saves you, what does he save? So your salvation has nothing to do with your body. So your salvation has nothing to do with your body. Within the video I'm about to play that you watch, Prophet Lovi Elias goes deep on why those within the LGBTQ plus community will go to heaven, especially the transgenders, even after their transition from a man to a woman or a woman to a man, after the total transformation. If they give their life to Christ, even still having those desires, Prophet Lovi Elias says they will go to heaven. The point of doing this reaction is where in his explanation as to why they go to heaven, he said that the work of salvation has nothing to do with the body. It is more of the soul. God is more interested in the soul as to compare to the body. Now, share your opinion and your thoughts with me under the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and put us on the bell notification icon. I'll be right back with Biblical Take on this and this is Ebel Global. Now, speaking of salvation, I'm going to ask you a question. A very provocative question. It may even go viral. <laughs> Can I trust gender person who changed their whole body? Let's say it's a woman or a man. Completely change their body. Then they come to Christ. They still have even the feelings of their old life. Are they going to make it to heaven? Don't say far from the mic. I would say yes. Why would they make it to heaven? Because they believe in Jesus. Yeah, okay. But why would they really make it to heaven? What would be the point? What is salvation of? When God saves you, what does he save? So your salvation has nothing to do with your body. Right. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So the issue is Christians have been stuck on your mistake. They think your outward is what God is saving. This body is going to the dust. It doesn't mean God is tolerating or accepting sin. He hates sin, but he has a provision for it. The salvation is of the soul. You don't get saved because of your body. You get saved because of your soul. And you don't get saved because you're good. You're saved because Jesus is good. Does that make sense? So the question is, how would that person live? Can you find this? Um, some were made unique. Some were born unique. So I want to show you something. Mm. <laughs> the issue is because people think salvation is of the body. If they see a prophet with dreadlocks, they'll say it's fake. <laughs> because they think my dreadlocks will take me to heaven. If they see me with tattoos, they think my tattoos are the ones that are determining if I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's about my soul. It's deep. My body doesn't get me any salvation. The Bible says that if Paul said it like this, if we still have to work for salvation, then Christ died for nothing. Wow. Yeah. If we still have to keep the law, then what was the point of Jesus dying? So people judge people based on their appearance. They don't judge based on the goodness of God and them giving their life to Christ. Everyone can make a mistake, correct each other in love, love each other in love, truly. But to say that uh, that one is not going to make it to heaven, you're crazy. Wow. Let me tell you, one of the biggest shockers is when people get to heaven, they will be shocked who is in heaven and who is not. There are people who have made salvation of the flesh and it has nothing to do with the flesh. Salvation of the soul. It is the soul that goes to hell. It is the soul that goes to heaven. 
So when God is coming after you, he's not coming after you, God is coming after your soul. Not that he's ignoring what you did in the body, but what you're doing in the body is the side effect of sin in the soul. So why would God punish the body, yet the body is being used by the soul? Because the body is manifesting what is in the soul. Did that make sense? Yes. There is no man of God, beginning from myself, that you will gather his one-year message and not find something there that needs deleting, adjustment, correction, or better presentation. No man in the world, nobody. There is no single individual who communicates truth that you carry his one-year teaching that you will not find something there that needs complete deleting or adjustment or correction or a better presentation. So it is not news if you find out that you listen to a man of God, maybe a father of faith or someone, and you see something that needs adjustment. It should not shock you. Are we together? Every time you listen to the message of any man of God, think two things. Man and God. Think two things. Man, you are not hearing God alone. Uh -uh. In as much as you want to admit it's only God speaking, you are hearing two people. You are hearing God, but the thoughts are being communicated in an earthen vessel. So you will expect the imperfections of the earthen vessel. Rather be friends and in the good books of people who distort the truth than call out the excesses all around. You want to be the good one who is friends with everyone at the expense of truth. Think about this. In the day of the coming of the Lord, in the day of rapture, at that very moment of rapture, within that very minute of rapture, if believers are caught or found in sinning, whether fornicating, bearing false witness against one another, killing, committing murder, doing all sorts of things, committing all kinds of sin which the Bible has already prohibited, do you think that they shall be raptured together with the faithful ones? If it is not so, then we cannot totally conclude or partially conclude that on the subject of salvation, between the soul and the body, salvation has nothing to do with the body but rather the soul. Therefore, whatever you choose is even to do with your body, even when you have become a Christian, does not even matter or even matters to God. Now, just because also we know that when the human body dies and then begins to decay, the soul lives on and even moves on to eternity, whether going to hell or going to heaven. Even upon that, depending on the kind of choices, the kind of life you lead on earth determines whether you go to hell or you go to heaven. Now, I believe that that is not all there is. There are many more to that. And it isn't enough for Prophet Lovi Elias to have said that con concerning the issue of salvation, salvation has nothing to do with the body but rather the soul. Within the hour of dispensation of grace, from this moment to the day we die as humans. Now, any other person who whether you are an armed robber, whether you are a prostitute, whether you are a murderer, whether you are a killer, whether you are all kinds of things, whether you are a gay, whether you are a transgender, whether you are a lesbian, the very moment you acknowledge and realize that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, whom which God, loving mankind, sent unto the world, that through Jesus Christ he is reconciling the world back to himself, Therefore, you subject all your life, your, the totality of your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You automatically receive salvation. Salvation is one of the greatest gifts of God to mankind ever. Now, when you do that at that moment, you receive salvation. And once you receive salvation, salvation is the gift of God to us. But it takes work to maintain salvation. For instance, in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse number 12, Paul said, Within my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And you must understand that the hour and the dispensation of grace is only when we are alive to the moment we die. That's why the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9 and the verse 27, that it is appointed unto a man to die at once and this cometh judgment. And so, if at all salvation is only about the soul, and the body has nothing to do with salvation. Why then do we have to face judgment even when we die? There are several scriptures in the Bible where God speaks about the importance of keeping our body. You see, once an individual or a soul receives salvation, one of the things that salvation comes with that you will see salvation reflecting 
in the body parts of the human nature. Because what does the Bible say in Romans chapter 1 verse number 12? Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Therefore, when we speak about salvation, it is not only about the soul, it is equally about the body. For instance, what would be the evidence of a fornicator who gave their life to Christ? Now, when they say to us that now they do not fornicate, we do not believe that until we see that a person who was a slave to sexual sins and immoralities now have given their life to Christ and do not sin again. What would be the evidence to us that an armed robber, a murderer, a prostitute has now given their life to Christ and they are now truly a born again Christian? We will only believe that all the evidence is true when we know that they, know, they do not participate in their former sins or habit again. So what do you mean by saying salvation has nothing to do with your body? You see, this, these are kinds of, kinds of doctrines and kinds of teachings that believers must never listen to. Already we are living in a time and dispensations where even the issue of believers overcoming sin is a problem. So how long do we have to even teach this? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and the verse 18 to 19 verse, the Bible says, that do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you and whom you have received of the Lord? That you are no longer at your own, you are bought at a price and therefore must you use your body to glorify God. In Romans chapter 12 and the verse number 1, the Bible said that brethren, I beseech thee all by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. You understand this, that the only way we can account that a person is truly saved and is truly born again is when they do not sin again or participate in their former sin. When a soul is truly saved, the impact is seen and felt in the body, in the nature body, in the flesh. Now, you cannot say that you are a transgender who now realizes that Jesus Christ is God and is the Savior of the world and that you have given your life to Him, but you still do not you know, participate in anything that the Bible says. What does the Bible say about the issue of homosexuality?